We are back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us, taking a walk through some amazing times in the past with Bill Carter, a conversation with Bill Carter, author of Get Carter, a book which came out more than 10 years ago, but tells the amazing story of his life and some of the incredible adventures he had, uh, you know, everything from life on the Secret Service to, all right, let, let's just set the stage here. The Rolling Stones, back during the Nixon era, were considered an enemy of the state <laughs> almost, were they not? In 1973, Mick Jagger and Keith Richards came to this country and toured and of course, you know, drugs and near riots, and it seemed like after they left, they were never gonna come back. The U.S. would not grant them a visa for a tour in 1975. They obviously had lots of money and power to try to get influence, but they couldn't get in. Tell me how you ended up hooking up with the Rolling Stones and arranging for them to come back and tour. Well, to go back to that last tour they did, there was riots and, and uh, security was out of control. Now consider uh, promoters then didn't know how to deal with large crowds because they never had that. Mm -hmm. And the Beatles, remember, they came in and they did two stadiums and then they They're told gone. out they quit. They said right. they were afraid because the security got out of control. Yeah. So uh, that that's it wasn't the Stones problem on that tour. It was the lack of knowledge the authorities had and how to deal with the kids. Right. So anyway, the State Department decided that uh, they were corrupting the youth <laughs> of America. And that was the basis for the decision. They were not to be allowed back in this country. Literally, they, they would have needed a visa, a certain type of visa to come yeah. here and tour, which is obviously worth millions of dollars. Right. And they said, you're not coming. Right. Now, they, didn't the Stones hire some high-powered yeah, attorneys? The Stones then hired a uh, New York law firm one of the biggest in the country, most powerful. And they went to the State Department and um, made certain demands and they kind of were thrown out. Uh, the State Department said, we're not going to list this, they're not citizens of this country, they have no rights here. So then the Stones hired a Washington political law firm, powerful, uh, same thing. Mm -hmm. And now uh, Jagger called Elliot Janeway, who was a New York economist, a powerful voice at that time. Mm -hmm. And he's an economist, so he knows Wilbur Mills, chairman who, of the Ways and Means Committee. Who is a Congress. congressman from Arkansas. <laughs> from Arkansas. Who you know. Yeah. Now, I knew him well because I had already been in Washington to help Fred Smith start FedEx. Mm -hmm. So I knew. There's another at, story to tell. Through my Go Secret on. Service years, I knew all the politicians. And uh, they. they I became friends with them, actually. Sure. So now uh, I go to. Mills calls me and said, I've got a client that, uh, Janeway, that wants, mm -hmm. uh, he, he has a client that's in trouble and can't get in the United States and, and needs help, and I referred them to you. So I called, uh, uh, Janeway actually called me to come to New York, and I went to New York and met him first. He's a representative for the Stones. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so then he set up a meeting with me and Jagger. So I went to the Plaza Hotel. Okay, set the stage, and you and walk in And there's in. Mick and part of those lawyers who've been thrown out of the State Department, and, and I've... Now Mick Jagger's this little guy, he's yeah. sitting there in a chair, and, and he, he just looks at you and you walk in. When I come in, he's sitting in the chair, I <laughs> introduced to him, and then I see there's three lawyers there with him. And uh, so uh, Mick asked me, uh, do you think you can do this? And I said, well, I don't know if I can do it, but I'll try, I'll give, do the best I can. And, uh, and the lawyer said, well, you know what, if we couldn't do that, how is it you think you can do it? From Little Rock, Arkansas, <laughs> and, and kind of made reference to me being a hick, I guess, and which, didn't really bother me, but then he said, you know, you're going to try to do something illegal and we're not going to participate in that. You're going to go down there and bribe somebody, pay somebody off. And I got up out of my chair and said, you know what, I've been in the military, uh, the Secret Service, and I've lived an honorable life and I'm not going to sit here and listen to these accusations. And I started walking he out. He said, get someone else. And you made it real clear. You don't care about yeah. hanging out with a and stone. So it's not like some big deal for Jagger you. Jagger was sitting with his feet crossed in his chair and he jumped out of the chair, grabbed me and said, wait, stay. And he said, he said to the lawyers, uh, I'm going to give him a chance. We're going to hire Bill Carter. So uh, I went back and 
I started. Uh, well, so you okay? The key here is then you get with Wilbur Mills, and uh, the, the powerful congressman, and you're talking, and you're working through it. And we don't want to bog down. It's really outlined nicely in the book. But ultimately, you got it to the point where you did pull this off. Little Arkansas guy pulls it off, but there was with one caveat: we will issue that visa for them to come tour, but only if what. If uh, I toured with them and protected the American youth. And you're like, what? <laughs> That's quite a responsibility. And it should yeah. have been protect the stones from the American youth. Yeah, right. Youth. <laughs> <laughs> but that, you were not angling to go with the stones. You were like, okay, I got your visas. I'm done. I'm out of here. And Representative Mills, I guess, says to you, look, uh, we're going to do this, but part of what will make this happen is you agreeing to go with them and make sure security and everything is handled. And before they would approve that, I had to submit a written plan of security for the tour. And what I did is took a, a advanced uh, security plan for the president. It took one of my old files yeah. and just converted it over to the Rolling Stones and, and, and laid it out and, and submitted it to the uh, State Department. Is it safe to say that what you did in that 75 tour for the Stones kind of set the template for the security we it, see it, even today? It was, it, it, the same uh, criteria for that secure that tour became the the mark of uh, yeah. uh, that was the template for it. That they looked at for that. stadium touring yeah. or large. Uh, outlet touring by the Rolling Stones or anyone else, so that's still in effect. Yeah. yeah. The only thing that's changed maybe is the technology. Yeah. But the same, and that makes sense. Secret Service did it best, and you applied yeah. it to the Rolling Stones. Now I've got. And let me. St we're going to take a quick call from Joe here, but um, I want to ask you about some of the antics with the Stones. Let's uh, go to Joe. Joe, good morning. Hi, Joe. Good morning, Nick. Morning. And, uh, yes, uh, he's already answered one of my questions about. Uh, uh, President Kennedy, uh, he, he he said he thought that uh, Oswald acted alone. I want to ask him what he uh, what's his opinion on uh, James Earl Ray. Do you think he acted alone? And uh, this this just goes to show you this gentleman here that uh, sometimes these hicks. Uh, smarter than these lawyers. <laughs> There's yes. no doubt about it. Yeah, uh, well, you know what it amounts to is common sense. Uh, they went into the State Department making demands. I went in there, and it's interesting, the guy that was making this decision, when I went into his office to meet him, now this is 1973. Mm -hmm. I had, my tie was this wide. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I hate to see a picture of myself in you know, the sideburns, and, and I had hair then. But so I walk into this office, and this guy sitting behind the desk has a tie that's about an inch and a half wide, and he's got a crew cut. Now they had, we hadn't had crew cuts since the '40s and early '50s. And I look at him, and I know I'm in trouble because this guy is so conservative. Yeah. But what I did. And there's a picture of you, by the way, back then. There's the sideburns. <laughs> that you with yeah, Mick Jagger that's and, about and the, Ted Kennedy. Yeah. yeah. So right. uh, that's great. what I did was uh, I knew I was in trouble, so I said, hey, I called him by his name and said, you know, I used to work right down the street here. And he said, where? I said, to White House. Yeah. With who? I said, with Kennedy. That opened it up. He, yeah. he wanted to know about Kennedy. He loved Kennedy, of yeah. course. And we spent a long time time talking about Kennedy and then uh, it opened, the relationship was established with him. It took a good while and a lot of other mm -hmm. things. In yeah. fact, what I ultimately did, they kept talking about the stones as a file and they'd refer to the file. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know what, they need to meet Mick Jagger because he's not a file, he's a smart guy mm -hmm. and an impressive guy. So I arranged to bring Jagger to the State Department. Yep. And when we came in the State Department, there was a riot. Every secretary in that building, there must be yeah. 2,000 of them, were down there to greet him and get a picture made with him and disrupted. And the security said, you know what, we've never had a head of state from anywhere like in the Mick world Jagger. create yeah. this. And uh, so... But, but the key here for you is you recognize getting to know Mick Jagger, that this is, as you've described to me, an intelligent, substantive guy right. that can communicate. If I can get him in front of the State Department, they can realize he's not some drugged up monster. And, and that started turning the tables in. They, they realized that, Can hey, Mick put on the charm? 
Yes, oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how would you describe him best? Just as, uh, just, I mean, obviously, uh, an very talented, very smart, and uh, very smart, and very, he's pr very personable. Uh, uh, I think he's different than Keith. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mick uh, plays the role. Mm -hmm. uh, Keith is just Keith. All right, on that note, we'll take a break. We'll take more calls, and when we come back, we'll let you describe how Keith can be Keith and how actually Keith had a really close call and, in fact, got arrested in your home state. You had to go down there and bail him out, right? <laughs> All right, we'll take a break. Uh, more with uh, the discussion, Bill Carter, Rolling Stones, and we're going to make our way before the end of the show into your connection with Reba McIntyre as well. We'll be right back with more right after this.